to Real Flicks Reviews Movie News. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Hello. and Ryan Preston. So, here is this week's question. In your opinion, what song is forever attached to a particular movie to you? And our answers in a bit. So, there's some interesting movie news. The first one I thought was funny is J.J. Abrams is going to produce a World War II zombie movie called Overlord. And my first thought was, hey, it's a J.J. Abrams Dead Snow. Is uh, Hugh Jackman going to be playing Wolverine in this? <laughs> Probably. Dude, I, I, I am I am so in. First of all, Dead Snow done by J. J. Abrams. somebody like J.J. Abrams. I am <laughs> so there. So I was I was talking on another Facebook page, and I had the same comment in the, the, in the admin. It was like, dude, seriously. <laughs> it was like, hey. I like Dead Snow. I haven't seen the second one, though. And... There's a list of the most anticipated movies of 2017, and Spider-Man's on it. And who the fuck is anticipating another Spider-Man movie at this point? It's not Hollywood? like there's been any good ones. It's only well, the Hollywood marketers. That's uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, it's the first Spider-Man Marvel movie, which, if history shows itself to be correct, it's still going to suck. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I really, really, really have high hopes after watching that, that original teaser. You know, because it it seemed like they were they were bringing kind of the the original soul back to the character, the the the, the funny. I really liked the kid that was in um, uh, Civil War, yeah, which I is agree. the same guy I who's was playing in, in Homecoming. <coughs> now, but it feels like they're just Hulk hulking the freaking Spider Man now. now yeah, they... to a certain extent, but also you got to remember that Spider Man was the first comic book movie that was that was done in this sort of new wave of comic book True. stuff. Now I, I do have a question for you. This is kind of not about this movie news, but there was movie news they may make uh, a Spider Man movie revolving the new Spider Man. I forgot what universe it is, but it's Miles something. You know, Peter Parker dies oh. and he's the the, the black kid. Oh, I was, oh, the one that they rebooted with. Yeah. The, the comic books. And I was thinking, you know, why don't they... I thought that was a brilliant idea, because Peter Parker's Spider-Mans haven't really worked. Why not just completely out of something out of left field? It's an I, I, mean, I think yeah. that's something that... Well, look, so Miles comic Morales? books have been doing this for, for, for 80 yeah, years. Yeah. They've been revamping characters, adding new things. Movies are, are so infantile when it comes to, to actually brandishing some of these stories and some of these arcs, they have years to get into, oh, now this Spider-Man's dead, now we have the new character <coughs> from New 52. So I just don't know, that the only thing is, unless you're like us who are geeks who kind of keep up with the comics, I think doing one with the, the new reboot, I think will be difficult because everybody's like, who's this kid? He's not Spider-Man, and you're going to have a bunch of geeks like, uh, dude, he's been a Spider-Man for like 20 years. Well, yeah, it's, but, it's and it, but my point being is the, 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 the rebooting of, you know, now you have the, the African-American kid being Spider-Man because the old one's dead. It's the kind of shit you do when you've ran out of Peter Parker stories. It's true. I have to admit, though, I'm kind of intrigued if they do that. I would love to see how they turned out. Matter of fact, and just make an anime about it. Make a cartoon. I'm legitimately interested to see not only how they do it, but how the general public would react. Because yeah. he's 100% different than anything we've seen before. Well, and But the general public is is not sick of Peter Parker yet. They should be. You know? Yeah. Um, but but they're not. You know, we're coming from a place of like, oh, okay, I've, I've 32 years of, of knowing about Spider-Man and his, and his different adventures and things like that. I've seen a thousand different Peter Parkers. You know, but but to, so you, you but the movie audience, you're getting a whole new group of people, this mainstream group of people. You don't have to 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 reach that far into the future yet. They can they can keep making money the next ten years before they bring out Black Spider Man. True. Yeah. And so another movie to get back on track that's coming out that people are looking forward to is Alien Covenant. Comes out May nineteenth, twenty seventeen. I'm look. I I'll watch every Alien movie. I'm, I'm kind of sick that way i'm hoping it's good because prometheus is a fan of the universe almost broke me it was so bad um even aliens 4 in some respect had more redeeming value in storyline than prometheus did in my opinion and that's well, look, aliens versus predators did oof, oof, that's rough but, but I, dude, I am i am such a ridley scott fan 
I mean, that dude has done so right by the 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 movie going audience. But you know, Prometheus from way sucks. back in the day. I mean, this this dude has had so few like not like hit movies. You know, not even like duds, but just like hey, this one didn't make a hundred million dollars. You know, but I mean, we're talking about the 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 the, the uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, I mean, obviously, Alien and, and Gladiator, for fuck's sake. Blade Runner. Um, I'm missing a ton. Black Hawk Down, for Christ's sake. I mean, these movies are, are like, like iconic to the time. Yeah, but we're talking about, you know, the the next Alien sequel. When the last one, the honestly, wasn't is, that great. I'm so willing to forgive the the subtle mistakes of, like, a Prometheus just to see another Alien movie. I just, wa- I just want them to do right. Um, and the next one is one that I'll be honest, I still don't see a point of redo- uh, completely rebooting this. this. is the next Power Rangers movie. comes out March 24th. This, you, you guys, if you haven't seen the trailer, you have to watch it because it's 100% different than the American retelling of the series. And God damn, does it look bad. Oh, it just it looks so fucking cookie cutter. It, it, it looks, it's like the most average fucking movie of all time with Power Rangers and new cool suits. It pretty much. It looks awful. Are they going with racist Power Rangers? No. So what it well, is? Well, they're is going this... with the tropes of the black guy is not the black ranger, and he's like, "But you're the black ranger, but I'm black. But how can you be the black?" It's so dumb, dude. And then what they do instead of all being because <sighs> in the the American the the very first Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, they were all goody two shoes and gall shucks. But now but you Amy have Joe Johnson, dude. She... And, and now you have all the, right? the bad. Now you have all the bad kids. These are the bad of the bad. They're so dangerous. How can they? And right. then, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's the ne'er do wells that get the powers, and they realize that they, they coming together and fighting as one, they can overcome all their fucking problems. It's basically a really cheesy redemption story. Just give me. You it know, might as well be the story of Step Up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just all they need. Is, all they need is a cameo from Jason oh, David Frank. And the next one I actually have to admit I'm looking forward to is Blade Runner 2049 comes out October 6th. I'm curious in how they pull it off more than anything. Uh, my question is are, are they going to be able to reproduce the feel of the original movie like 30 nope. plus years after the fact? No. Oh, sorry. Mike's away from me. No. Um, you've got the Lego Batman movie that'll do well no matter what. You've got the reboot of the Tom Cruise Mommy movie, which is supposedly going to be the reboot of the Universal Classic Monsters. I don't think it's going to yeah. do well because it's not in the twenties. Well, that's the thing is we've already we've already kind of gone against my my uh, my instincts of like oh make this in the twenties and it'll be a great movie, but they're not doing that. Okay, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and watch the movie. Um, but here's a good one. Uh, as much of a fan of Ridley Scott I, as I am. He's redoing Murder on the Orient Express. Ooh. Hmm. All right. Now, Ooh. that's a genre that we don't see too much of nowadays is like the straight up who done it people in a in a in a in a in a locked room murder mystery. That was noir though, right? So this is going to be very noir, but at the same time, even if they do it noir today, that's a genre that hasn't been beaten to death. Not really. I mean, you did have the the hate not the yeah, the hateful eight. Yeah. Well, Hateful Eight was a very specific voice telling that kind of story. Well, I'm yeah. actually kind of I I I'm not a giant fan of noir and neo noir, but I'm kind of digging the idea of kind of dipping the toe in the water because a good who done it just doesn't happen. Matter of fact, usually they're so predictable well, that this bastard next to me is like he did it in like the first two minutes, and then like two and a half hours later, he fucking did it. Yeah, right, I'm exactly. There, like, but, yeah. but Ridley Scott, man, I mean, this dude has such a a, a a tap right into what entertains me. You know, I don't I don't know if it's just me or, or or if everybody sort of feels the same way. But I mean, I can't imagine you know people feeling differently with all the Blade Runner fans and Alien fans out there. You know. So some of the other movies coming up are the the Fate and the Furious. It's gonna do well and it's gonna suck. The fake and the furious? The fate no, of the, the furious. No, the fate of the furious is the new fucking oh, furious. I'm calling the it fags of the furious. I'm, I'm calling it fake because it's just it's gonna do well but the movies still suck. There's never been a good one. You mean the they should the title furious? the movie How to Print Money. Seriously. And Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man uh, Dead Man Tell No Tales it's gonna do well and it's gonna suck because like the other ones. Also How to Print Money. It's 
Yeah. Oh, the, man. And the next one is... Yeah, com- I, think, I think James and I watched the first Pirates like three times together in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Kong Skull Island. I originally wasn't interested, but the more I oh. hear about it, the more I it seems... It, it seems interesting. So I'll probably definitely see it. The Beauty and the Beast live action. I'm not a giant fan of this trend, but... I'm a I fan do of like, Beauty and the Beast. I do like Beauty and the Beast, and so I'm going to end up seeing it. Tales you know what's funny about that time. is I'm I'm totally willing to accept those and actually go see them because <laughs> I I I'm the guy who wanted to see the the real life version of Batman so long and it's the same kind of thing you know Disney movies having their 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 princes and princesses so Michael yeah, Keaton you was want to see the real version crush? of that I get it so there's Thor Ragnarok coming out and I'll be honest I probably won't see it because I'm kind of sick of Marvel movies at this point that's you know. You, so well, you guys, know what's fun? This one has actually been kind of a long time coming, the the Ragnarok one. So yeah, it, has. it I just the so muddy, the waters have been muddied since that movie's announcement, but I'm still looking forward to it. So just to kind of to get through the list a bit, because we're running a little. We got the question to answer. We got Dunkirk, Guardian of the Galaxies two. I want to see that. War of the Planet of the Apes, Spider Man Homecoming. They're doing another um, Planet of the Apes? Wonder Woman, which eh, might be interesting, and Justice League, and Logan, which is definitely one we're going to end up seeing, probably doing for the show. And so here is our question of the week. In your opinion, what song is forever attached to a particular movie to you? And I'm going to go last on purpose. So Ryan, batters up. Okay, well, you know what, actually, the, the, the reason I had, I had thought to ask you guys this was um, I was uh, just driving down the road, and um, don't ask me why my, my Pandora suggested this, but Berlin, uh, Take My Breath Away came on. And I immediately got transported back to Top Gun. You know, I, haven't probably, I probably haven't seen the movie in, in 10 years. You know, uh, at least all the way through. But I was immediately like, oh, fuck, I'm watching Top Gun right now driving down the road. You know, and that that song to me is forever attached to that movie. So every time I hear Take My Breath Away by Berlin, which is not often, you know, that that is what I think of. That is the imagery that I have. And it is no, forever yeah, I get that. attached to that movie. So, yeah. James? Uh, I, I, got, I got three. I'm going to make them quick. Because <laughs> there's one that's Jump Out, Duh. I'll give you, that. <laughs> you know, I mean, that one will always be there. I'm so glad this isn't. I'm gonna. Have. And this one's, you know, kind of name that movie. I'm pretty sure you guys will get it. Oh hell yeah! So th- that it's one, Shrek. And, and then this one's. John wants to be <laughs> slapped right now, but I'm gonna let it go. And this one is the more random one. If I go away. I Can you know name that movie? Rise, I know it, but I can't place it. Polly Shore. Oh, it's a lot. Every time I hear oh. that song by Bob Denver, I always think of Polly Shore going around in the freaking okay, mine, harvester. Mine is a little a tad bit more obscure. <laughs> Ever heard of the movie Young Einstein? Yes. And rock, I've seen and, it. rock and Roll Music by Chuck Berry. Oh. He plugs in this like electric guitar. Yeah. That that's a movie I loved as a kid. So it's always every time I hear it, I remember the remember the scene of him strumming that electric guitar. <laughs> right. I, I have a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, one, "Where Is My Mind" by the Pixies, uh, being played at the end of uh, Fight Club. Yeah. When he said, uh, "You met me at a very strange time in my life." Yeah. Every time I hear the Pixies now, I just I get transported back to those those buildings collapsing in the background. And wants to fight somebody. Uh, and. Um, Oh man, what was the other one? You just you just made me think of it too with with your with your suggestion. What was it you said again? Uh, John or me? John. Rock and roll music by Chuck Berry. It's Young Einstein. Oh right, um, uh, Johnny B. Good from um, yeah. Back to, uh, the Back to the Future. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so for a couple of more things of movie news. Um, John Lennon <laughs> and Yoko Ono's love story will be made into a movie. And no interest. My my question, is it going to show John Lennon beating her like a weak old steak? He was not a particularly nice individual to women. No, he wasn't. Um, well, you know what? I, I think enough time has passed and people... Are forgiving people spousal People like uh, Ringo and Paul would, would approve of, of having a very 
realistic and and even keeled uh, uh, approach to his life and and his legacy. I, right. I think the only thing with the Beatles is they're so loved. I think there needs to be a, not only even but a truthful biopic of them because everybody seems to hold them as like musical gods. They don't realize that John Lennon was a giant asshole from everything I've well, ever read about him. Here, here's the thing, man, is is human beings in and of themselves are a thousand different things to a thousand different people. And the Beatles touch so many lives that there are, there, there are four billion Should different things to four, different, uh, four billion different people. So, right. you know, when, when they go through their, their um, I want to hold your hand phase into the psychedelic I am a walrus fucking shit... <laughs> Yellow you know, submarine. it's you understand. There's an Don't evolution of a, of a human being in there, and of a band itself. So, I, I think people have come to respect them as as just artists and people, also. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And the Beatles were were very talented, but I don't think we have to deify them. Is I guess what I'm saying. Oh uh, yeah. We can yeah. we can respect them as human beings and having their own flaws and 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 their own characteristics. And that influenced their incredible music. You know what? Yeah. I'm with Ryan. Let's let's take away their knighthood. Yeah, fucking a. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just regular screw old you, Paul England. From now on. So Vin Diesel, Brits. Vin Diesel may have a possible Oscar award. There may be a spinoff of Groot, which means that'll be the best acting he's ever done by saying one word. Yeah. Yeah. Or three, technically. I am. Oh Groot. come on now, dude. Let's not forget Pitch Black, bro. <laughs> Come on, it wasn't exactly award winning. No, first hold on one, a second. I'm not even fucking kidding. That movie was awesome. No, no, no. I yeah. liked the first liked, one. Uh, yeah. The second one was entertaining. The third one sucked. And, and don't bother with their uh, animatrix cartoon oh. section in between. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, right? If yeah. you don't know what the animatrix is. Don't. No, the animatrix is well worth watching. Well, yeah, but I mean, the animatrix version of. Uh, so, I have, I have a yeah, question. Don't watch that. How many impossible missions can there really be? Because Mission Impossible 6 is coming up down the pike, and I want to know how many times does can the little guy Tom Cruise save the world in an impossible fashion? I don't know. I mean, well, shit, how old can he get before he can't <laughs> use anymore? Uh, probably needs a stunt double. <laughs> no, he, he's an Olympic athlete. Just ask him. <laughs> he invented the Internet. Um... The most interesting hey, with Scientology, you can do anything you want. Honestly, the most interesting news that I've really read in the last couple of weeks was the Incendies director is going to try to resurrect Dune. Dennis uh, Val Valenview is going to direct a new uh, Dune movie. What do you think? Uh, I mean, I don't know the guy uh, guy's style enough to say he'll do a good or bad. I yeah, do th right. I I do think the two movies we have, we have David Lynch's actual movie and the Sci-Fi Channel's, you know, mini series. How there's not much you can really do different because between those two that's a very broad spectrum of storytelling. Yeah, it's <sighs> I don't think there's enough about that particular story that I'm that I'm that much of a fan of. That... Now, I, I I do like it. There is a lot of history. I mean, there are a couple of books after Dune, and uh, Frank Herbert's son has written more. So I'm I'm thinking they're going to have to not tell the same story. You know? That yeah, that, and that's almost kind of how I feel about it. Now, I I don't know. I'd probably have to watch all of the versions and read the book and write a fucking dissertation about about why I feel the way I do about Dune. But I, I'm I, I couldn't look forward to this movie no matter who was doing it. Uh, I'm not interested. Um I'm gonna see it just because I love Dune, but I I don't know. I really don't know how you can do anything different than the two movies that have already been done. And did you guys like the movie Groundhog Day? I do that's one of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. It might be a perfect movie. Fuck anybody who says any different. So I, I found this website posting that said the reason why his day was repeating. And it was actually in the script and apparently got removed. His ex-girlfriend cursed him. Huh. Well, okay. For, for, for the record, Harold Ramis is one of the craziest sons of bitches that ever lived. God, I miss that guy. The original script for this thing was so long. It was like something like 400 pages. Oh, wow. Like, it was really ridiculous. Like, the amount of time, and this has been argued in a couple of different places, the amount of time, the, or uh, the amount of days that he spent 
reliving that that single day was something like ten thousand years. Oh damn! You know, and basically the the, the reason that I love it and the and the reason I can watch it a, a hundred different times is that's basically how long it took him to realize not only what was important but what was necessary to live the way that should be lived. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just this very altruistic look. I realize it's not about me. It was the most egotistical person learning, you know, the most altruistic lessons. You know, all at all at his own sanity's expense. Yeah, you know? and it, it's 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 a story. It's a, a method of storytelling that's been around forever. But that version of doing it is probably one of all, my all time favorite movies. And when I saw it originally in the theaters. I didn't like it. To me, it was like, you know, uh, I hated the Jackal, for example, when I first saw it. But I've seen it, like, probably a couple of thousand times since then. And every time Wait, I did see you say it, the Jackal? When I saw the Jackal that first came out, I hated the movie. It, it, Talking it took, about Richard Gere and, yeah. and Bruce Willis? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was comparing and the... And Sidney Poitier? Yeah. Well, Having I, one of the most awkward line reads of all time? Anyway, I won't get into that now. Well, yeah, but when I first saw it, I didn't like it. I've seen it since then, and I can see what it is. It's a stupid action movie that has some fun scenes in it. Um... Since I've seen, it does have some fun scenes for sure. And I've seen uh, Groundhog Day probably at least a hundred plus times, and every time I see it, I enjoy the movie even more. Yeah. I seriously, I cannot find a flaw in that movie. It's it's whatever that script was in the beginning, four hundred pages or whatever. Whatever they whittled that down to, and they shot is one of the most beautifully perfect things I've ever seen. And they picked the perfect area yeah. of the United States to film. There's nothing about that movie to me that doesn't just make me laugh. And the perfect cast, I mean, for Christ's sake. Uh, uh, Andy McDowell. Uh, Andy yeah. McDowell. A, and, and always had a was, crush was, on her. Yeah, was she was great. I always liked Andy McDowell because in, in Hollywood, what every woman's a blonde and blah, 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 Andy McDowell was just naturally gorgeous. Yeah. Just very girl next door. Like, yeah. oh, you are the most adorable thing in the world, yeah. aren't you? Ah. Exactly. I'd still marry her. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't even care if I'm an ex-husband in three days. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Andy, hit me up. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I'm kidding. I love you, honey. <laughs> until Andy McDowell walks in the door. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if you hear Ryan talking funny next week, it's because somebody got the better of him. Um, ah, geez. Yeah, so... the. There were some really good stories this week. Do you guys any, have anything to finish the show off with? Andy, um, you're only 58. No, got to hook me up. I've got a little wine left. I need to get that. Um, no, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're good. So, ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.